Hello, I'm doing a book review, and the book I want to review is Superman American Alien. Now, this is a graphic novel written by Max Landis and illustrated by several different artists. Now, this was first published in 2016 as a comic book series, but in 2017, all the issues of the series were put together as one graphic novel. Now, Max Landis is the son of John Landis, and he wrote movies like Chronicle, Victor Frankenstein, and American Ultra. Now, American Alien is a retelling of Superman's origin, which of course you've seen before. In fact, I just recently reviewed John John Burns, The Man of Steel, which was also a retelling of Superman's origin, and in a lot of ways, this book almost feels like, in essence, kind of a remake of that book. Now, the plot of American Alien is it's sort of a collection of interlocking stories, but each story sort of shows a different period in Clark Kent's life. And it follows Clark Kent from when he's a little kid to when he's a young adult, and it's about him coming to terms with what he is, and him eventually becoming Superman, and then it really becomes about the world dealing with the fact that a being like Superman actually exists. And in between each chapter of this book are these little comic strips that sort of give you a new insight into a certain character, or they sort of tell you about things that are going on in the universe of this story, or are setting up things that might happen years later in the universe of this story. Now, I liked American Alien a lot. Keep in mind, it's been a few weeks since I've read this, so if my memory's a little fuzzy, I do apologize and I thought it was an interesting and unique take on Superman's origin. Granted, Superman's origin is something that's been done in comics a billion times before, but I thought Max Landis did a really good job with it. And I thought it was interesting how basically in the continuity of this comic, it turns out that Batman is kind of the reason that Clark Kent decided to become Superman. Like, there's a moment in the story where Clark Kent accidentally ends up on Bruce Wayne's yacht, and it's Bruce's birthday, but he hasn't shown up to the party because it turns out that at this point in the timeline, Bruce Wayne is away training to become Batman. But everybody thinks that Clark is Bruce Wayne, so he actually starts impersonating Bruce Wayne for a while. And then Bruce sees security footage of Clark pretending to be him, and he's like, who the fuck are you? And, like, later on, Clark Kent becomes a journalist, and he interviews Lex Luthor at one point, and it turns out that Lex's tower, he has, like, a little daycare center, and one of the kids at this daycare center is a young Dick Grayson, who it turns out was taken in by Bruce Wayne. So, later on, Bruce Wayne, as Batman, pretty much jumps Clark Kent in his own apartment, and Clark just rips the mask right off him, and basically... Basically, later on, he ends up using Batman's cape when he first decides to become Superman. And I thought that was really interesting. I thought it was interesting how, in the universe of this story, Batman is sort of the reason behind Superman. Another little interesting reference to the Batman mythos is one of the comic strips in between the chapters. It turns out that this story's version of Jimmy Olsen crossed paths with Two-Face, and he discovered that Two-Face was actually Gotham City's former district attorney, Harvey Dent. You also get a reference to the Green Lantern mythos at one point, where Clark, after getting into a fight with his friends, just flies right off the planet, and it turns out that he can't breathe in space, and also him flying so fast into space has actually burned off all his clothes, and he probably would have died if, if not for the fact that he was saved by a bunch of Green Lanterns. And one thing I thought was really interesting is while the world as a whole doesn't know who Superman actually is, everybody in Smallville knows who he is. Like, it turns out that growing up, everybody realized that Clark Kent had special powers. I thought that was really interesting. Again, I thought this was a really cool take on the Superman mythos. I also thought it was interesting how Superman in this story is not really the Boy Scout that we all think of him as. Actually, Clark in this 
story is quite arrogant, but also sort of feels that he's a freak. One thing I didn't really like about this story, and it was only one moment in the story, but there's a certain point in this story where Superman gets into a fight with this story's version of Parasite, who you find out in a comic strip called Vampire was actually a drug addict who signed up to be a test subject. Over the course of a couple of days, this transformed him into a monster. And then after getting into a fight with the Parasite, Superman throws him into the water, which turns turns him into a human again, and when he's a human, he tells him that, he tells Superman that it was Lex Luthor who did this to him, and then when Superman goes to confront Lex Luthor, he just throws the guy, the guy who was the parasite who turned back into a human, he throws him right through the window of Lex Luthor's office, and I'm like, okay, I know this guy was previously a monster, but it seems like he turned into a human again, and it doesn't seem like this was entirely this guy's fault. That's I don't really consider that to be very heroic to just throw this poor guy, even though he did probably kill a lot of innocent people, but to just throw him right through a plate glass window. Although you could kind of play that off, that maybe at this point, Superman is still so young that he's still kind of trying to learn how to control his emotions. I also thought some of the dialogue in this was really well written. Like, when Clark Kent first meets Lex Luthor, you realize that Lex is an elitist prick, but he explains his philosophy in such a way where it's like, yeah, I totally disagree with you, but what you just said, I'll admit, did give me some pause. And in speaking of well-written dialogue, there's a little comic strip in between two of the chapters called The Real Question, and I thought this was freaking brilliant. It features that villain whose name I can't pronounce, but he's basically an imp from the fifth dimension, and some of his dialogue here I thought was really well-written. And this comic strip does break the fourth wall where this character directly speaks to the reader. So here's an interesting question. Who's more real, you or me? But the answer is obvious, you might say. Except it isn't. How many people know your name? A hundred? A thousand? Five thousand? How many people have seen your face and recognized it? Less than you think, I bet. I was created as a character in 1944. Think about that. Millions of people have known my name. Millions of people have seen my face. About half of them are probably already dead. But here I am. Oh, I suppose I don't have a physical body in the same way you do. But does that make me any less real? I don't need a body. I've lived on, and will live on, in heads. In the heads of the authors who write me. I have no vocal cords. And yet, right now, you're hearing my voice. I'm living in your head right now. But ideas have no agency. Wrong again, of course. Ideas are agency. We are gods. You are just puppets. As long as there's one of you, there'll be a hundred of us. You're holding this comic, reading it, and you think you're in control. But you're so weak you can't even pronounce my name. Go ahead. Try it. And he says his name, and of course, me proving the character's point, I can't pronounce this character's name. And when you think of me later, in a minute, in an hour, in a day, or a month, or a year, I'll be alive again. And yet, I can promise, with absolute certainty, that I will never once think of you. It's all nonsense, of course. But it's an interesting question. But yeah, that was my review on Max Landis' American Alien. Now, I'm not sure if this is meant to be a self-contained graphic novel, or if this is meant to be an ongoing comic book series, and this is just volume one of the series. People in the comments could probably correct me on that, like, whether or not this was meant to be a limited series, or if Max Landis is going to continue this. But that was my review, and bye.